Welcome back to 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. We begin with First Lady Jill Biden heading back to Washington, D.C. after staying overnight in Bakersfield. Now, 17's Robert Price is at the Padre Hotel right now. Bob, what can you tell us? Nicole, apparently the First Lady really enjoys Bakersfield because almost 24 hours after she appeared downtown uh, yesterday, she's still here. She's still enjoying the, the accommodations at the Padre Hotel. She apparently had to teach her class and decided she'd rather do it from a hotel room than from a motorcade somewhere. But we've had Secret Service and uh, some other folks, California Highway Patrol, Bakersfield Police, waiting in the alley and on Wall Street, waiting for uh, the First Lady to come out. We've still got traffic going down H Street, but we expect that to be shut down momentarily as the motorcade prepares to uh, take her back to Meadows Field. Uh, it was a little busier earlier. We had folks with uh, camouflage and all kinds of activity. Things have seemed to be, uh, seemed to be calming down. Maybe the First Lady's enjoying a little uh, early, early lunch. But uh, anyway, here we are, downtown Bakersfield in the Wall Street Alley. Robert Price, Nicole, back to you. All right, thanks so much for that, Bob. And now to a man fighting for his life after a shooting in Wasco. It happened on North Maple Avenue just before 9 p.m. That's where deputies say they found a man suffering from at least one gunshot wound. The man was taken to Kern Medical, where he remains in critical condition. Homicide detectives are investigating. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Kern County Sheriff's Office at 861-3110 or the secret witness hotline at 322-4040. And the community of Orange is mourning after four people, including one child, were killed in a shooting at an office building. Officers responded to reports of gunshots around 5.30 in the afternoon yesterday. After a shootout with police, the wounded gunman was apprehended and transported to a local hospital in critical condition. Witnesses there explain what they saw and heard. I heard a bunch of popping and then, but I thought, I didn't know if it was guns or... And um, I was on my computer and I saw the window moving back and forth. And I'm like, oh, I need to go check this out. So I went outside and sure enough, somebody was shooting over there at the office building. What did the gunshot sound like? Like pop, pop, pop. How many shots do you think you heard? I want to say about 10. So far, police have released few details on the victim's shooter or motive. And police are investigating what led to a man being struck by a train. It happened around 535 this morning near Stein and Pacheco Road. According to BPD, they found the man on the train tracks. Police say the man was rushed to a nearby hospital where he remains in critical condition. This is an ongoing investigation. And over 1,100 PG&E customers in West Bakerfield were without power this morning due to a power pole on fire. Residents in Jacob Creek neighborhood off of Stockdale Ranch Road lost power around 7.30 this morning. Kern County Fire responded and put out the flames. During their investigation, KCF determined the fire started underground and PG&E crews worked to isolate that failure. The power was restored to customers. And as we begin the fourth month of the year, we're still learning how deadly the coronavirus pandemic was during the holiday season. Current public health confirmed an additional 11 deaths today. A total of 1,264 people have died from the virus. January continues to be our deadliest month of the pandemic, with more than a quarter of all coronavirus deaths happening in that month alone. Health officials say most of the people who died over the past few months are a result of the surge we saw following Christmas and New Year's. Public Health also announced 49 new cases today. New state data shows there are 57 people in the hospital with coronavirus. 11 are in the ICU. And encouraging news on the fight against coronavirus, vaccinations opened up to all Californians 50 years old and up today. And this morning, Governor Gavin Newsom rolled up his sleeve to get the vaccine. Governor Newsom received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, a one-dose shot. He says he wants everyone who's now eligible to protect themselves, their families, and their neighbors by getting the vaccine, and it doesn't matter which one. And I just encourage everyone 50 and over, do what I just did. And I would encourage you, when you're curious what's the best vaccine to take, the best vaccine is the next one available. The eligibility will change once again in about two weeks, starting April 15th. Anyone 16 years old and older will be eligible to make a vaccine appointment. 
And as part of California's plan to distribute vaccines equally, people 16 and up living in most areas of Kern County are already eligible to get the shot. There are some exceptions. People living in the six zip codes on your screen are not yet eligible under the new criteria. Those zip codes include 93287, 93311, 93312, 93314, 93561, and 93531. We have more information about Kern's vaccine plan on our website, kget.com. And you can sign up for a vaccine appointment using the state's website, myturn.ca.gov. You can also call 833-422-4255 to schedule your appointment. Last year, the pandemic shut down everything from schools to businesses and even amusement parks. Here in Kern County, we have not moved out of the red tier, but our neighboring county, Los Angeles, has been given the green light to move into the orange tier. Six Flags Magic Mountain has officially reopened its doors to the public this morning, welcoming back their season pass members today and tomorrow. But Saturday, they will be open to the general public. 17's Ileana Capion was there bright and early, checking out the new safety precautions in place. Now, the park will also be enforcing social distancing and mask protocol. They will also be spacing people out on the rides, so you may encounter some more wait times to get onto a ride. And it's no joke, baseball is back today. Today is opening day and the season will look more normal than last year. Despite coronavirus, Major League Baseball will play a full 162 game season. It starts today and runs through April 3rd. You may remember last year the season started on July 23rd and was shortened to only 60 games because of the pandemic. The first game kicked off about two hours ago with the Toronto Blue Jays and the New York Yankees. Now for Dodger fans, the 2020 World Series champions, they'll take the field in Colorado this afternoon. First pitch is just after 1 p.m. The champs will be on the road until next Friday, where they will have their home opener for the next season. That's the day Dodger Stadium will host fans for the first time in 548 days. This will also be the first time fans will be able to see the stadium after its $100 million renovation last year. For the other California teams, here's a look at the schedule. The San Diego Padres and Diamondbacks face off at 110, the same time of the Dodgers game. The Los Angeles Angels, Oakland A's, and San Francisco Giants will start tonight after 7. The California Living Museum is extending their hours. Now beginning today, Calm will be open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Wednesdays through Sundays. After closing for a couple of months amid the pandemic, Calm received the green light to reopen back in March. Now, the zoo was running on limited hours, but they have extended them for their guests. A reminder, Calm will be closed on this Easter Sunday. Well, the price of toilet paper is on the rise. Kimberly Clark announced Wednesday that its rising prices are on many of its North American products, including things like Scott toilet paper and Huggies diapers. Higher commodity costs are hurting companies' profits. Experts say they may lose out on sales from consumers who are still reeling from the impacts of coronavirus. And Facebook is rolling out a new feature aimed at combating COVID-19, vaccine profile frames. The frames allow users to show their support for COVID vaccines and see others doing the same. Research indicates that social norms play a large role in people's attitudes and behaviors, according to Facebook's press release. The Department of Health and Human Services and the Centers for Disease Control worked with Facebook on the Frames project. Facebook believes that if users see more people they trust take the vaccine, they'll feel better about getting it themselves. The profile frames will be available starting today. Finally at noon, April kicks off National Donate Life Month, and if you don't have that pink dot on your license, you're encouraged to get it. Bakersfield Heart Hospital helped recognize the month with a flag-raising ceremony this morning. The month of April helps recognize donors who have helped save lives and brings awareness to the need for more donors. Donate Life Month and being a registered organ eye and tissue donor is just so important all the way around for our community and all communities really because when someone gives, other people live basically. There are over 100,000 people waiting to receive a life-saving transplant and for myself, receiving a kidney and my blood type, it was going to be a 10 to 13 year wait. For Vaughn, after being on dialysis for a year, she found a match, which so happened to be her husband. She said she knows she's lucky. Most others have to wait years to find their match. Vaughn says for more people who become registered a donor, the more people 
will receive life-saving transplants. Now, if you are interested in becoming a donor, head to our website, kget.com. We have more inf information there. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.